hi. So um, if you tuned in, this is the Mom Project. I mean, mind over matter. It means mental health. Real talk and awareness. Yesterday, I told you about um, somebody that tried to commit suicide and jumped over the bridge. Uh, not very nice. So then what happened was, we also had another attempt of life last night. And I just happened to have to assist with that life-saving intervention. And to be honest, it, it, it disheartens me when people want to take their life. And you know why they want to take their life? Is because they are most probably, well in this case, victims of awful horrendous crime you don't know what you keep doing to people you don't know how you hurt them men women emotionally mess someone's state of mind your one incident that you do and that you commit on one person has a lifetime effect emotionally and mentally the person that I was assisting, obviously I'm not going to tell you who I was assisting, can't be doing that. But they're alive and they're safe and they're well. That is thanks to intervention. Devon Project, real talk, intervention. I don't beat around the bush when I'm talking to people when it comes to suicide because that's not what they want. They don't want mamby pamby and they want real talk, straight talking. I can teach that because I, I live that. My intervention, that person stayed on the phone to me for a matter of from 10 o'clock until half 12. You know, that, that's a long time keeping someone on the phone. So whilst I kept somebody on the phone, I'm having to liaise with the police and liaise with the ambulance services. Turns out the ambulance service wouldn't go to the destination that we needed them to go to because the person was no longer at home. Which kind of felt, that's bizarre, have I, have I lost something? Did I miss something? Why wouldn't they go? Because it was a park? Um, did I miss it? Or is it the police job? But it turns out that the police did come and I want to say thank you to those police officers that let you up and took that person to hospital. <clears throat> because that's where they end up going, isn't it? So you don't assume to take them and then take them straight into a 136 mental health institution. That kind of doesn't work like that much. So what they do is they take them to hospital and check them over because the person had taken medication. But alcohol on top of it. There's the alcohol that triggers of the emotions and that's why I say please steer clear of the alcohol please do that steer clear of the alcohol because the alcohol I personally call it the devil juice <laughs> I really do literally because you, you just turn completely different person once you have alcohol in you you know it can cause a lot of domestic violence you know it can cause hallucinations it can cause let's have a look there are lots of elements when it comes to alcohol, a lot of elements when it comes to alcohol. And uh, alcohol is the root of a lot of evil. And that's what I call it, the devil juice. And I will say steer clear of alcohol at all times. And the reason why the person at the end of the day was probably more intrigued, on top of the trauma that, that they was already having, was because um, the alcohol just escalated it. But that was their way of self-harming. That was their way of coping strategy. And in this fact, they, they didn't feel safe. They told me they did not feel safe. And that's what I like. Um, their honesty. Because they were being true to themselves. And it wasn't a matter of being ashamed of saying those words, I do not feel safe. 
it was a matter of I was absolutely proud of them to for admitting they did not feel safe. Suicide is not something to be ashamed of and you should be able to speak to somebody about those words. If you do not feel safe, you do not feel safe. How can you keep safe? Well, you talk to somebody, you can call the crisis team, you can call 101, you can, you can. And uh, in this point, they did call the crisis team, but they didn't like the fact that they had a, um, uh, I'm going to say, uh, uh, the opposite sex, that, that what they wanted, they didn't want the opposite sex to speak to the opposite sex because of the trauma that they'd lived in the past. So they chose my service to speak to. And I was grateful for, for them to reach out to me. I'm grateful, and I've spoken to them today, and they're still alive, and um, they're in safe hands, and they know they've got to get well. And they know that they were honest and open about their feelings. So it's about getting them correct help, correct care package, the correct resources for them to move forward. And I'm going to continue to work with them when they um, get to a place of safety. Um, but my point to suicide prevention is your destructive behaviour has come from somewhere. It's a damage. You're damaged. Some of the people you damage, you're a survivor. You're not a victim. You're a survivor. Because the crime has already happened. The issue has already happened. So that's past tense. So the thing is, at the end of the day, when you're here today, the issue is what we need to get over is the past. And it's pretty hard when you have pending court cases or pending, yeah, pending court cases, pending trials. It's, tr it's a trigger, isn't it? It's a constant trigger. So what is going on is just, it's heartbreaking. It's very heartbreaking, but I'm absolutely proud of the person that they are still here today because they spoke out. And I always say, speaking out saves lives and support saves so much more. So I am very proud of them. And I said I would continue to work with them when they get back on their feet. And I'm right here. I'm not leaving because that fear of abandonment is what they don't like. Fear of abandonment. And also, though, somebody that has particularly a uh, disorder or emotionally unstable personality disorder or borderline personality disorder. Also, if you've actually seen the word BPD, that is borderline personality disorder. And that disorder doesn't like being abandoned, but will push you away also. But when you know the tricks of the trade, you're able to talk them around. You see, I know pretty much every trick in the book. I've had 30 odd years of experience, so I know what I'm talking about. And that's what they like, and that's what they relate to me about, because they understand that I have lived it also. And you cannot kill a killer. So I, it was just nice to be able to assist in times of crisis and actually work with the police who did an amazing job and because normally that's another fear factor is the police and um, and what they will do. Uh, a lot of victims of crime or survivors, they do not like the police. I'm sorry to say that, but it's a true element because of the stigma attached to the police. Which in this case, I am going to say they were lovely, they were courteous, they actually liaised with me. But I did think it was a little bit of a cheek for them to turn around and say, because I'd already been on the phone for like two hours, they would pick me up, which was about 15 miles away from the person. And they said they would pick me up and then they would take me so I could sit with the person. And that was not possible. That was just not possible at that stage. They didn't ask me my background. They didn't ask me any of that. But the thing is, at the end of the day, the person chose me to speak to. So, um, unfortunately, the police had to go and sit with them in the waiting room in the a &E, And that's the procedure. Okay, so, it's, um, 
Hello, Missy. <laughs> Hello. Safe and well, but unfortunately, having to go to Woodlands, that is the place of safety, which is in mental health care, and it's a place of safety, and that's where they are now. Um, and they actually agreed that it was for the best interest. And, and that's the thing, when you can acknowledge you don't feel safe, that's the best thing that you could possibly do. So I have had a very tearful, emotional day, to be honest, because so because I care so much about that human life and where they are. And what makes me so annoyed, though, is that when they've been so much of a victim, and I know this this one here, when they've been a victim of crime, a victim of I'm just putting out that for examples when they've been a, a really a victim of something uh, very painful, um, something that you you just don't forget, some trauma, some nasty existence stuff that has happened to you. Uh, perpetrators been a victim of of crime or whatever. When they've, when they've gone through that already, that there is already traumatic, and people use that as PST, which is post traumatic stress disorder so not only have you been a victim of crime horrendous crime you have then become this label with PSD which is post-traumatic stress disorder on top of your med uh, medical disorder your diagnosis which then becomes a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder or emotionally unstable personality disorder so suddenly you're getting all these labels you've got all these labels on top of your, on top of your um, traumatic experiences, and that's where people start becoming their labels. And I'm going to tell you again and again and again: you are not your label because to be your label, you're a victim of your past. Stop being that victim and become a survivor, because you, when you become a survivor, you can give back and you can help somebody else with this disorder, with with these diagnoses, with these anxiety levels, with these panic attacks. Oh no, here I go with the breathing. <sighs> I don't breathe like that because it affects me when I'm talking. It's, it makes me, it's a trigger. I'm relating to the emotion. That's why I'm able to give back. Okay, so when they're going for these anxiety and these panic attacks, it's because they're reliving these things because something's triggered them off. There's always a trigger point. There is always a trigger point. And unfortunately, we have to learn to try and move forward and push forward from these painful ordeals, from the painful past. I mean, I'm going to relate to my own story. As I said, as many of you may know, you know, when you're a victim of childhood grooming or rape, um, that can take many years to overcome. So you can either become the victim of it or you can become the survivor of it. But either way, I would ask many of you to stop letting the past or stop letting them steal your joy. They don't care whether you live, you survive, or whether you're here or not. They don't care. Your, 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 your perpetrators don't care. They'd rather you take your life, wouldn't they? But you see, you're not there to... The best thing you can do, stand up, be counted, go out there and save somebody else. Because your input and in how you survived will make a difference to somebody else. Now, this person, they all day long, I'm not giving up on them. I am not. It may be they may be very challenging. I like a challenge, and I'm not going to give up on them. In fact, uh, they're going to be a big part of this. I know they will. I have no no qualms whatsoever to make sure that. We support that person. They deserve that because, you know, they were once a normal human being. But just because they've been broken and they're living with this traumatic experiences does not mean we have the right to give up on these people. We have every right, with all the tools given, to change and turn their life around. So I'm not giving up on you if you are listening. I am certainly not going to give up on you. I'm there, and I've enjoyed my chat. 
for the most of the day because that helped you even to get through where you had been today to keep safe. So for me, don't give up on someone because they're in difficult times. Don't do that. Don't do it. Doesn't that make you a coward for walking away from people? Not meaning to call you names, but doesn't it make you, oh, I can't cope. Okay, you can't cope, but neither can they cope. Does that mean you'll stop giving them a lifeline? Time, that's all it takes. We live in the moment. We don't live for tomorrow, we live for today. Time. And I feel sorry for them right now that they're even there. They should be out there on signing up and enjoying their life and having a holiday. But this is because when you are a victim of crime, you, you guys, you perpetrators, you females, you males, you perpetrators, I'm going to use that word, perpetrators. When you hurt someone, you hurt them in ways you have no idea what you do. So you think about your actions before you impose your nasty mouth, your nasty behavior, or even your body on another person. Because not do you make them live for that moment, they live a lifetime of trying to discover the real identity. Because what happens with trauma is you revert almost back to childlike mode of safety element. Many of you know there will be a head and a child inside that head. It's a safety zone. Inside of your head is a safety zone. It really is a safety zone. And that's why many people, they've got these coping strategies that you think, oh my God, aren't they boring? I mean, they never go anywhere. Well, of course, they don't want to go anywhere because they want to feel safe. Safe. Because damage has been done. But for me, guys, I'm going to say to you, do not let, try and not let previous past trauma, especially if you've been dealt a horrible hand by perpetrators, take any more of your enjoyment. Don't let them steal your enjoyment. Don't. Please don't. And uh, I'm, I'm going to get on the touch on the subject because somebody emailed me earlier on the subject of uh, school bullying. Your children, and I'm going to say it again when it comes to suicide prevention, that's where it's got to start. You need to teach your children very early on how they can keep safe, how they, what they can do in the event that they are being bullied because many of these children are not saying anything. They're keeping and masking a secret. If you don't know how to help a child or recognize the symptoms, I can do this in many other shows, but most of all, Google is there. There is YouTube. There is loads of research, loads of statistics. Do your education and help your friends and family. Um, I want to say once again, thank you for the police, which I'm going to say thank you to the police. Thank you for the police for intervening on the handover and taking them to a place of safety. I much appreciate that. I'm saying no more on this topic right now but all those that have faith many of you don't but faith is what gets me through and it has got many other people through and please don't forget to say if you had a god it wouldn't happen if there was a choice between good and evil at the end of the day but we already know what evil does and sometimes these things us sometimes people like myself have been a victim of horrible processes and that question, well, if there was a God, that would never happen to me. It would never happen to me. Sometimes the reason why people go through what they go through is to set the example to you guys that are non-believers to say, you know what, here I am. It's happened to me. And I really want to save you. So I don't work for anybody. I work for God. Yeah, please offend. I don't ram my faith on you. I'm saying if it wasn't for a direction and a focus, I wouldn't be here talking to you either. So those that do have faith, can we just pray for that victim and many of the other victims out there, please, for safety, 
for an outlet to be able to find the strength and the courage to speak to somebody in their time of need. So that's me. So that's real talk. I can't say no more than what I've said. All right. So. You are here.